Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is your King in the Castle, King in the Castle photo news fix. <laughs> this fix is brought to you by Wirestock, which is still the easiest way to sell your photos, videos, and vectors online. It's simple you upload your photos or videos to Wirestock, they tag and keyword them for you, and then distribute them for sale on the largest stock websites like Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Pond5, and now Getty Images, as well as iStock Photo. You can do all this from one single free account, no subscription fees or flat fees. When you sell something, Wirestock takes 15% and you get the rest. There's still no reason that you should shouldn't just start uploading videos with your free account. I don't want to hear it, but I don't know what to shoot. Literally anything. A toothbrush, toothpaste going on a toothbrush, a toilet flushing backwards in Australia, anything. To sign up for free right now, head on over to bit.ly slash wirefro27. First up, last week was a busy week for action cameras with both GoPro and DJI dropping new singles, mixed singles, at the same exact time. First, let's start with the GoPro Hero 11 and the Hero 11 mini. Yep, there's a mini, but more on that in just a second. The GoPro Hero 11 sports a brand new 27 megapixel sensor that is capable of shooting 5.3K video at 60 frames per second, now with 10-bit recording. GoPro says that the 10-bit recording allows you to capture billion colors. The new sensor comes with a new aspect ratio of 8.7 for video, which allows for cropped vertical videos for stupid TikTok dance videos like this. They've included a new super wide 16 by nine field of view, hyper smooth 5.0 stabilization that now includes 360 horizon lock, which is always cool to see in action. Like all the most recent GoPros, you have a screen on the front as well as the back, along with retractable finger mounts and swappable lenses. So the accessories you already have should work without a problem. The GoPro 11 will set you back $500 or $400 when you sign up for GoPro's subscription. On top of the Hero 11, GoPro also also announced an 11 Mini. I shall call him Mini Me. The 11 Mini has the same sensor and features, but in a smaller package. It drops the front and rear screens, has mounting fingers on the back and bottom, and doesn't have a removable battery. Now we've seen something similar back in the day in the GoPro Hero session, but that was a complete failure, and I mean absolute complete failure. <laughs> I'm personally not a fan of not being able to swap out batteries or not having a screen for framing, but I'm sure that there's plenty of creators who will grab one for 400 bucks or less when you get a GoPro subscription. And now onto DJI's action camera. This time around, it's called the DJI Osmo Action 3, a GoPro clone that uses a different size and shape sensor than the Hero 11. The Action 3's claim to fame is it shoots 4K 120 frames per second with rock steady 3.0 not to be confused with Rob Steady. There's also an all new extreme battery that DJI says can record for a whopping 160 minutes if you're shooting in 1080 without stabilization on, which is probably not how you will shoot this camera. Now they do have a quick charging option via USB-C where you can get back to 80% in just 18 minutes of charging, which is actually pretty cool. The Osmo 3 features front and rear screens, magnetic accessory mount, and their ability to be waterproof down to six 16 meters without needing an extra housing. Now, I've personally not used one of DJI's action cameras, but you can see it's squarely aimed at taking on the GoPro, especially being that it's priced to sell at only 329 bucks and you don't need a GoPro subscription to get a discount. The biggest question is this, will people still pay more for a GoPro or give the Osimo a shot? Now we're gonna dive deeper into this story and much more on the next Raw Talk podcast that comes out on Friday. New episodes come out every Friday with the old ones being available wherever you listen to podcasts, including at fronosphoto.com slash podcast. And if you listen to last week's podcast, you know what to put down below. Next up, last week, Nikon Rumors posted a rumored Nikon camera roadmap that showed the Z8, Z7 III, Z6 III, ZF, Z5 II, Z90, and the Z52. Salty. And, and not Z52, it's the Z50 II. II, Captain! 
Well, this week, Nikon Rumors has confirmed that the roadmap is not real. Maybe it felt so real because I wanted it to be. And I quote, the person who originally created the roadmap just contacted me to clarify that he kept that document going for years as a summary of Nikon cameras and that it's from a forum thread dated back to 2009. Nikon Rumors wanted you to know that today, we still have websites racing to be the first to report the leaked Nikon Z roadmap. Now, I love how these rumor sites get all butt hurt. Now, I, I could say butt hurt still, right? Right? Well, anyway, let me check Google for the definition. And the definition is, it's used to draw attention to a person who shows signs of being irritated due to a perceived insult, an unfavorable situation, or lack of decent communication. The term butt hurt originated from spanking, the act of striking the buttocks of another person, which is often seen as a method of punishing a child. I always thought it meant something else, but glad to finally know it means beating someone's ass. I only came here to do two things, man. It's like we're almost out of beer. Anyway, I love how Nikon Rumors gets all upset that other sites are stealing their reporting as if the leaked or stolen information that they're stealing is somehow better. Whatever, we'll talk more about this on the podcast as well. And finally, in some real news from Nikon, Nikon has announced the Z17-28 mm 2.8, the latest addition to the growing selection of extremely capable and very affordable F2.8 lenses. First off, very affordable is subjective, and adding the word extremely before capable doesn't make it any more capable. That's With that being said, it's nice to see that Nikon is releasing less expensive, faster glass in comparison to their more expensive high-end glass. The 17 to 28 joins the already released Nikon 28 to 75 2.8 for the Z mount. The new lens weighs in at only 450 grams or 15.9 ounces and is lighter and more compact than the 14 to 30 f4, which on a side note, I'd probably prefer over the 17 to 28 as it goes much wider, not quite to 11, 11? but close enough. 11! Nikon's goal is to create faster glass that they can get into more people's hands. For example, the 28-75 2.8Z is a thousand bucks, and this new 17-28 is $1,200. So for less than the price of the 24-70 2.8Z, you can have these two lenses. Good on Nikon for giving people more affordable, faster glass options. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around to check out the last fix. Go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Pullen, Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.